Okay, so in the last video, we looked at grouping of plants and animals, and we're now going to look at classifying animals and the use of a Latin scientific name. So there's a particular procedure we look at when we're classing, classifying organisms, we're putting them into groups. And we start with a big group at the top and we work our way down to the individual species at the bottom. So there's a little rhyme that will help you to remember this. It's called a monomic. You may have come across this term in English. It's where you create a rhyme to try to remember a difficult sequence of terms. So a common one is Roy G. Viv. Richard of York gave battle in vain. The colours of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So we start off with keep putting cyanide on fat, greasy slugs. I've also come across keep putting cheese on fat, greasy sausages. You could create your own at home if you like, something that will help you to remember that. Now each letter of that rhyme represents a term, a key term. So we'll start off with the highest, the most important, which is the kingdom. So this tends to be a massive, massive group of organisms. For example, the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. The next group is the phylum. Then we've got the class, the order, the family, the genus, and then eventually the individual species. So you'll see we're working our way down from a very big, important group into all these subcategories, eventually leading to the individual species itself. Now, all organisms have a, a scientific name. So rather than just a common name like tiger, bear, we've got the individual Latin name. And this avoids any confusion due to different languages. The Germans, the Spanish, the Swedish will all have their own translated term for the bear or the tiger. But by using a, a standardized system across the globe, it avoids confusion. Now, let's look at an example. So we're going to look at an example of the tiger. Now, the tiger belongs to the kingdom known as Animalia. Okay, so what that means is it's an animal. Simple. Its phylum is Chordata, which basically means it's a vertebrate. It has a backbone. So of course we have the invertebrates as well. Its class is mammalia, which basically means it's a mammal, it's covered in fur, it's got warm blood. Its order is carnivora. And that means it's a carnivore, it eats meat. Its family is felidae, which basically means the cats. So it's part of the cat family. So typical kind of cat features, whiskers. Its genus is Panthera, which means it's part of the big cats. Doesn't mean it's a panther, just means the big cats. So we're talking like the tigers, the lions, leopards. And then species is Tigris. So the Latin name for this tiger would actually be Panthera tigris. Now it's normally written in italics. I can't, I can't write in italics. Um, but the first part of the name is always the genus. And the second part of the name is the species name. So the full Latin scientific name for the tiger is Panthera tigris. So you can see just why it's important to remember that. I keep putting cyanide on fat, greasy slugs.